Hello everybody and welcome to episode 42. Uh, this episode probably won't take us very long, contrary to the last episode. I just figured that the last one had gone pretty long as is with our, um, our hook shot, our grappling hook. We've written the code for it, so as you can see I'm like hitting things with it and it's working. Um, it's just invisible at the moment. We don't actually draw any of it to the screen. Um, so that's what we're going to fix in today's episode. Relatively straightforward to do so, but um, as I said, the last episode had gotten kind of long enough. Uh, if you skipped the last episode because you weren't interested in the grappling hook, it was a bit too specific or whatever, that's fair enough. You can skip this one as well, and then we'll be back to more uh, generic stuff, all right? So assuming you brought in the sprites that we needed at the uh, start of the last episode, um, that is uh, S-hook blade and uh, S-hook chain, um, you have pretty much everything you need. Okay, so make sure again that the origins are in the middle of those two sprites. Um, the hook chain is going to make up like every segment of chain. Um, so we're going to draw this on repeat for however long the chain is, and then we're going to draw the blade at the end of it, okay? And we're pretty much going to do all of it um, in the draw event of O player, okay? So get, go to O player, go to the draw event, and this is where we're going to be doing all our work today. The first thing I'm going to do is going to come to the very bottom of uh, this draw event, and I'm going to actually declare a function. I'm going to write function draw hook chain. And that's right, you can declare functions outside of scripts. Um, you can declare them pretty much wherever you want, um, but it does affect what that function, um, it affects the scope of that function. So by declaring this function here instead of in one of our scripts, uh, it becomes uh, it local to uh, every instance of O player. That is to say, we won't be able to call this function from anywhere except an instance of O player. All right, because we've declared it inside O player. Whereas when you declare them in a script, they become what's called global scope, and you can declare them anywhere. You might think, you know, it's it's a little bit unintuitive, this kind of thing at first, just like with global variables, thinking, well, why not just make everything global, you know? Um, just trust for now. Um, with, you know, I don't really have time in these videos to go into a explanation of all that kind of stuff. Um, but just trust for now, it's a good idea to restrict things where you can. And since we know um, we're only going to want to do draw hook chain inside the draw event of the player. That's the only place we're going to want to draw the hook chain. Um, we, we can declare the function here. You might also be wondering why we are even doing this as a function instead of just writing the code. We're in the draw event. Why not just do it? We'll come to that in a little bit as well. <laughs> okay. So just, just for now, uh, function, draw hook chain, open close brackets, and then open and close some braces under here. Okay, um, and in this function we're going to write everything, basically all the, the draw sprite and everything that we need to do to actually draw the chain, and then um, why I've made it a function instead of just, you know, writing that code underneath here, you know, just was where we drew the player, um, will become a little bit clearer. Um, but first of all, let's just draw our hook chain and get that out of the way, okay? So the first thing we want to do in here is write var origin x equals floor x, uh, var origin y equals floor y, okay? Floor x and floor y just being the exact same place where we drew, you know, the player sprite, and I'm not going to include z, I'm going to assume we can only do this on the ground. Um, but I am going to add a minus 7 into here, that's just to adjust because we know our player's position, you know, um, it's centered on, like, the bottom of the player, right? So we have, like, um, we have our player sprite, and the origin is, like, here, and the hook chain is going to want to come from somewhere like here, or like here, depending on like which direction you're facing and so on, right? So I've made a little minus seven adjustment to that. Again, just a magic number. It's just, it works for this situation, okay? Um, next up, a var chains is going to equal hook div hook size, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that hook variable, which contains the amount of pixels we've stretched out in any direction. So again, like we have our player box or whatever and maybe it starts like here is our origin and then hook is the amount of pixels so that it's that distance by doing a div hook size that's going to give us it's an integer division right so we're dividing by this but only returning whole numbers so no like um, fractions or anything like that it's going to give us the exact number of times um, this uh, hook chain sprite will fit into that distance okay so if it's like that long and the thing is like Oh, I can't It'd take forever to draw it, but you get, get the idea. It's working out exactly how many hook chains we can fit along that distance, okay, without going over. Right. Um, once we know that, we can write var hook de x equals sine hook x, var hook de y equals sine hook y, and that's just going to tell us, you know, it's going to be plus one if 
combining these numbers together is going to give us a vector essentially of like what direction we're facing, right? Because sine is going to be 1, 0, or minus 1, depending on what this value is, 1, minus 1, or 0, depending on what this value is. So if hook x is greater than 0, it means our hook is going off to the right somewhere, and if it's less than 0, we're going off the, the left somewhere, right? So minus 1 means left, positive 1 means right, um, negative 1 for this one means up, and positive 1 would mean down, right? Just gives us the direction. Okay, those are the variables we need. And then we're going to write a for loop. 4 bar i equals 0. i less than uh, chains, like, you know, again, the number of uh, chain segments we need to draw, i plus plus. Okay, um, and that's all. We're, we're going to loop over every chain we draw and just draw each segment of chain, okay? So starting from wherever our player is, we're going to draw a section of chain and another one and another one and another one until we reach um, like this distance, right? So uh, draw sprites. And then I'm going to, uh, instead of writing all the, the stuff on this line, there's going to be a few things. So I'm actually going to split Sprit? split the arguments over a few lines, just like that. Um, remember, you can always do that. Uh, S hook chain is going to be our first argument. That's just the, the sprite we're actually going to draw. Um, I think doing over multiple lines makes it hard for the autocomplete to come up, but you remember, draw sprite is pretty simple. We just need to provide the sprite that we're going to use, which is S hook chain, the image index, which is going to be zero because there is only just that one image, remember? And then an X and a Y, all right? Simple. Um, the X is going to be origin X, um, again, so that's where the player is pretty much, plus hook X uh, minus I multiplied by hook size uh, multiplied by hook the X. And a comma on the end of that, okay? Okay, so that's a little tricky, so let's just like break it down, right? Um, Origin x is where we're starting, plus hook x, remember that's the, the physical length uh, between origin x and however far the, the, the hook is extended, right? That's the very far end, and remember we want to draw a section of chain like all the way along, uh, along the chain, right? So uh, we've gone right to the end, we want to basically, for every loop of i, subtract uh, one width of chain and then draw another one, right? So i is going to go from 0 to the number of chains, so for each, so initially at 0 we just want to draw the, the, the final bit of chain, then we're going to come back uh, by one size, so when i goes to 1, it's going to be 1 multiplied by uh, however wide the hook chain is, 5, right? So it's going to come back by 5 pixels, um, and then on the next loop it's going to come back by 10, on the next loop it's going to come back by 15, and so on until we end up back uh, 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 where we started essentially. Um, and in order to do that in the correct direction, we multiply it by hook dir x, okay? Because um, if uh, we are shooting the hook off to the right, we want to be subtracting a positive number to be coming back to the left, where if we're shooting it off to the left, we want to be subtracting a negative number, or, you know, adding, essentially, to bring us back to the middle, okay? Um, and then we do the exact same thing for y. So origin y plus hook y minus i multiplied by hook size multiplied by hook the y, okay? A little tricky because it's kind of going in reverse, but again, like just to visualize that one more time, if we have player here, and the, the hook origin is here, and we know that the hook is extended like this far, and we know that that fits in about like five sections of chain because of that division, what we're doing is drawing this one first, and then we're doing a loop and subtracting this amount of space to draw this one second, this one third, this one for and so on until you know we've we've drawn the number of chains we needed to draw. Okay, um, so after we've done that for loop, um, all we need to do then is uh, draw the blade at the end. Now in my original script, I kind of overthought this next section and we recalculated the angle, um, which you can do and you might need to do if say I don't know you have a more complicated um, uh, animation for the player that's like you know actually performing an animation. But since this is you know four frames long and our image index is giving us our direction between 0 and 3, we can actually just use that to decide uh, which one of these we need to uh, draw, okay? So again, back in this draw event, 
all I'm going to do is write draw sprite s hook blade, um, uh, and the frame is going to just be image index. Okay, I, I went to write from my script for there underscore frame because I did a thing to recalculate it originally. But as I say, we don't need to do that. Um, if if you do for whatever reason, say you had a more complicated um, like like hookshot animation and you you needed to recalculate what direction specifically just for this blade, you can just do it by writing something like you know angle equals point direction uh, not not uh, hook to x hook. You know, yeah, using these, right? Hooked to X and hooked to Y. You can work out that as an angle 0 to 360, and then just do like angle div 90 to, you know, divide it down to 0 to 3 rather than being like um, 0 to 360. But we have image index, so we don't need to waste the time doing that. So <laughs> we're just going to do image index. Um, and then where we're going to draw it is simply going to be wherever our origin is. So origin X plus hook X. Okay. And origin y plus hook y and we do it in this order specifically so we do the hook blade after the blade uh, the chains so like uh we guarantee that the blade gets drawn on top of the chain right and drawing things on top of one another and under one another is the exact reason we've done this as a function it's a handy segue um so i can i can actually minimize that now if we want um we're, this is all just the drawing of that stuff, but um, we're not actually doing it um, in the the draw event at the moment. We've just declared a function here. Now we're able to do it just by calling draw hook uh, draw hook chain um, just wherever we want like that just by typing it. Um, so why did I bother to do it as a function? That's because we actually need to do it twice, okay? Um, because we're drawing the player, uh, and then we want to draw the um we, we want to draw the hook shot but depending what direction we're facing um we're, that will decide whether or not we want to draw the um the grappling hook before or after the player and because you know it's code and code only runs sequentially like one thing after the next um uh the only other way to do it would be to like write all the code to draw uh the hook shot before drawing the player and then write all that code again after the player and we know that whenever we have a situation where we have to duplicate code or so on, there's usually a better way to do it. Um, and in this case, just writing a function means we can use that code in two different places very, very easily. So first of all, we're going to do it before the player up here. Um, and I'll just copy and paste this in because it comes with a comment. Um, Hookshot before player. So just before any of this stuff. Um, if our state is uh, play state hook, and our image index is not three, that means we're facing left, right, or up, we draw the hook chain before drawing the player. All right. And then pretty much identically after um, all of this, um, you know, after we've done drawing the player, again, hook shot after player, if the state is player state hook, again, and image index does equal three. So specifically, if we're facing down, then we want to draw the hook shot over the top of the player. Okay. Um, You'll see that a little bit clearer when we actually run the game. Uh, don't worry about the fact that this is declared afterwards, because I know I've just said, well, the code is run sequentially, right? And if we put this down here, how is this going to know what this even is? But again, like functions and stuff like that are, are sorted out at compile time. They, you, know, you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about that with function declaration and so on, um, like code order and that kind of thing. Um, just as the same as with macros and so on, it doesn't matter where you put these. Um, the, the, the same is mostly true for these. Um, other than declaring their scope, like by doing it in this event, we've localized it to um, the player object and made it non-global, but otherwise it doesn't matter what whereabouts in this uh, chunk of code we actually put it. So I'll put it at the end there just as an organizational thing so we can check that out when we need to. All right, so I can go ahead and run this now. Um, apparently we're still running it from before, but let's press F5, run this again swap to the hook shot and when I fire it you can see now it's drawing okay um, let me uh, just uh, zoom in here a little bit so you can see nice and clear this coming out um, so you can just you can see what I mean like it's drawing behind the player currently because it's one of those directions if I turn around here it's still drawing behind the player and you can kind of see it sometimes a little bit just coming out from behind like you can see it just sort of underlapping um, the edge of the kind of purple gun thing it's coming out of right but then if i face down we needed it to draw in front of us because you can see otherwise it would like be behind our feet and so on there and that's not what we want and facing up it goes behind us 
facing down in front of us. And it's, it's pretty simple, you know, it's just using a, a little bit of quick maths and a loop to just draw multiple of these um, um, hook chains uh, segments over and over up to the maximum number we need, and then just drawing the blade over the top of the end there so it all looks nice and clean. All right, simple stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, sorry if these last two episodes were like a lot of work for something like really, really specific. But again, I thought it was useful to show you how to do like an interesting, super specific mechanic um, on top of this kind of like foundation of code. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. I'll catch you all next time. A huge shout out in particular and in no particular order to the following patrons. Max M, Raildor, Basil the Dog, Seanathan, James Grimley, Robert Churches, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Jason, Darkrider0318, Rupinda, Renny Dam, Samir and Yaya Like a Glow, Yoram Pater, Cabbage Pants, Figgy, Kaza Ho, Reva, Vapaleon, Andrew Gilbert, Jason Welch, Phil Keen, Odd Spiral, Jordan Hake, Feral Princess, Arctics, Rachel Stewart, It's Matt Poor, Philip Sheard, Stephen Shenier, John Kenai, Michael Kolich, Julian Cropley, Gage Hunter, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Tranquil, Jake Crumsey, Darth Wolf, Isaac Miller, Eric Santana, Adrian.exe, Josh Verbin, JD O'Dea, Jiminy Whip, Puppets, Timothy Hare, Elijah Kang, Blunt BSE, Troy Nile, Zardrian, Miguelan, Daniel Blatt, Severus, Salva Thief, Blenny Savant, and Falkwood. Thank you all so much, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.